You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6.30. A loophole in the law allows for some guns to go untraced, and these ghost guns are increasingly involved in crime. We introduced you to ghost guns a few weeks ago. They're homemade guns, essentially bought in do-it-yourself kits online. No serial number or background check required. Our Target 3 investigative team has been following this since the first known case popped up in central Illinois last month. Investigative reporter Renee Cooper is here. So, Renee, how widespread are they? Well, Jennifer, the best answer I could find comes from Everytown. That's a nationwide nonprofit pushing for gun safety. Their search of the online marketplace found at least 80 sellers of unfinished guns last year. Now, what's less clear is how many people are buying these kits, assembling guns, and reselling them. And then, how often are those weapons used to commit crimes, like shootings we're seeing here at home? I sat down with the Attorney General to find out. I would say it's say definitely within the last decade, um, it's been become a more prominent. Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raul says ghost guns are a relatively new phenomenon, but just how many are circulating our streets, officials aren't so sure. Champaign County is tackling its first case. 18-year-old Keon McLaurin faces several felony charges for selling guns he bought online and built. But barring an unlawful sale, ghost guns are largely unregulated, and there's nothing in federal law that specifies when a firearms parts kit becomes a gun. But without that, you know, it's, it's, it, it becomes a wild, wild west. So how often are these untraceable guns used in shootings and murders? I don't have that accurate data, but I will say that, you know, um, using information we received from the city of Chicago, it's increased exponentially. The, the prevalence is increasing uh, year by year. A Champaign County assistant state's attorney says they do believe some of the guns McLaurin manufactured ended up being used in shootings. Right now, there's no concrete proof. He adds, even if those guns were recovered by law enforcement, it would be hard to prove where they came from because, again, they're virtually untraceable. Still, Raul says the majority of firearms behind statewide violence are not ghost guns. Where so many of them are coming from isn't clear. Is there a loophole in our criminal justice system that's making it possible that law enforcement doesn't know the origin of guns? I'm glad you asked that question because one of the, the projects that we've uh, taken upon ourselves to embark on is uh, creating of a statewide uh, crime gun tracing platform. And so um, uh, we have partnered with every town. And as ghost guns grow in popularity, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives proposed regulations that would define ghost guns as firearms, requiring background checks and serial numbers. These are guns, right? These are guns and they should be a subject to the same restriction as all guns. Now in August, Raul and about 20 other attorneys general across the country urged ATF to finalize those regulations. That hasn't happened at this point. And as for the statewide crime guns database, Raul says we can expect that to launch in a couple of months. Back to you. All right, Renee, thank you so much. The Springfield City Council will